Um, I've now got the calipers back from Big Red, which are awesome. Um, I'll show in a minute the uh, unboxing when I got those back, probably about two weeks ago. And now I've just received um, the brake discs and pads from Torque GT. Had a bit of an issue with um, Essex Rotary. Don't believe there's any fault of their own. Uh, their supplier wasn't getting the parts to them, so unfortunately I had to cancel the order with those guys. And then got straight onto Torque GT, who had the same parts in, which is the Dixels. Um, slotted discs and I've gone for the Dixel ES pads as well. So uh, yeah, and they got them here. I mean, phew, hasn't even been two days since I ordered them. So let's have a look. I'll show you the boxes and we'll see what's in them. Right, so you'll see both boxes from Torque GT. Um, one's slightly bigger than the other. Um, they're both pretty heavy, obviously, because there's going to be discs in there. And this was the big red box, well, the box from Big Red um, with the calipers uh, in which you would have already just seen, um, hopefully, or you're about to see the unboxing of those. So we'll crack open these um, and see what we've got on each box. Yeah. All right, so bubble wrap. Uh, oh, you actually need to look. There we go. Oh, when I, a bit threatening. Uh, so there we go. So we got some bubble wrap came out first. Got the pads, the ES, the extra speed from Dixels, fronts and rears, these are, uh, I'll find out when I open them up anyway, and then one set of discs in here, so we take the discs out, the box can go away, let's have a look, um, that's the rears, oh, look at those, look at those, They look pretty good. Pretty, we've got good fittings there. Yeah, and they're coated, which is one thing I was actually gonna do today, was um, give them a spray um, or heat resistant paint so I could prevent any, uh, any undue rusting, but they've already done it, which is perfect. So let's crack open the second one, which should just be fronts. Oh, how nice, guys. <laughs> a free, uh, well, it's, oh, it's a bit sickly. A bit like bubble gum. Just point them up a little bit so you can see the box. There we go. So, some bits from there, guys. Talk to your sticker. Dixel stickers. Oh, cool. Okay, add it to my big pile of stickers that I've got from different bits. Uh, that will just be the invoice, which we're not going to see on camera. Um, I'm not uh, not hiding obviously the price pay for them because they're on the website, but uh, my address so none of you sickos find out where I live. There we go. It's like Dixel grease or something. Well, advanced brake technology little sachet. We'll have a look at that in a minute. That was just loose in the back. So let's get right here. Look at those. Jesus, forget how heavy these discs actually are, how big they actually are. So Definitely the fronts. Uh, the old original pair of discs, a set of discs, are still um, here. They're actually back on the car so I can put the wheels on. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, I'm really happy they've actually been coated because that was literally the job for this evening was to unclip, um, unwrap them, clean them all up and then give them a high temperature coating. But we can probably go ahead and try to get them on. But no one's really in the camera, are they? Um, yeah, let's work on this. And there you go. Look at me doing a nice little setup. So that's the both the sets of discs unboxed, set up. Uh, took out the plastic bags. There's a load of wrapping that came with them. Um, both the pads, these little grease sachets were, were chucked in as well. One was in one of the brake pad boxes. The other two were just chucked around. Um, yeah, this is awesome. And you have a bit of cardboard in each box, which tells you if you've got the six or 12 um, slots as to which way around they go. Um, obviously, I've got the sixes, as you can see. So I shall be following that one, um, direction of travel, which is awesome. I am super happy with this. The speed that Talk GT got it here as well. I know I checked on the phone that they had some in stock. But yeah, for the uh, the big 30, what, the fronts are 32 mil wide. Um, the rears, oh, I can't remember offhand, I think 30. But the, yeah, 314 mil discs for the RS. I am super chuffed that they're, uh, they're here and they're that awesome. 
So I think what we'll do now is we'll um, have a look at the car and maybe um, actually, do you know what? I think I'll unbox the calipers as well and we'll get some uh, some wicked shots of everything and can go. <laughs> Guys, I did it. I got out the calipers as well. I just, I love it every time I get these out of the box and wrap them. It looks absolutely amazing. Probably looks better in, in uh, person than it does even on the camera. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's the full set. So refurbed calipers, obviously done by Big Red. I um, got back a couple of weeks ago. I think they took about five weeks from sending them away uh, to getting them back. Awesome guys, awesome service. Every time I phoned to you know, check on what was going on, because I got quite impatient, which is my bad, not theirs. They were really friendly, uh, really helpful. Um, yeah, you can see inside the calipers, everything is completely new. I've just been rebuilt. The paint's amazing. Um, so they painted filed off the Mazda. Um, I think I had it white when I'd redone them before and then they've clear coated so there's no chance of any uh, edges lifting. Uh, everything's new you'll see from the bleed nipples, uh, the springs and the handbrake bits there which is cool because I actually had taken all the bits off I was cleaning them up ready to go um, but now I don't need to. Uh, yeah awesome well happy. So uh, let's have a look at the car. Right, so well, they had the wheels back and they'd been refurbed and that's why I stuck on the old discs just so I could get the wheels back on um, and have them mate up nice so I could take the, the car off the jacks because I went away for a while. So here we go, we've got the trays of parts here that were saved and cleaned up. Obviously most of these now won't be needed um, because they've replaced a lot of the stuff um, on the calipers. But anyway, we've kept it and we'll work our way through. I know what I was talking about just then, the springs for the... Um, handbrake on the rear calipers got new stuff so yeah really happy with how these wheels came out as a local company called bump express so i think what we'll do then is we'll probably lift uh, i'll do the fronts i think first there's a little jack underneath the uh you see the jack and arm beam under there i'll run it up to the front lift the front up and then um start working on it i'll show i'll uh, pretty much blow by blow on this one so I just rolled the cobra back out of the way um run the uh the hoist or the jack, like the bean jack, whatever you want to call it, that's part of the lift. Well, it rolls on the lift anyway, as you'll see. Put it under the subframe then with these um, like high density foam blocks, so I haven't got to worry about having bits of wood or cloth or anything. Um, so I've just taken, oh, there we go, taken weight off the front of the car. So what I do now is I'll just slap the nuts off, take off the wheels, um, so then we can get off the old discs, and we'll um, yeah, we'll work from there. Right, so there you go. I've just taken off um, the wheel and the first disc, well, first old disc, and I've just softened it up so you can see <laughs> the comparison of there. This almost looks like it's drawn; it's not actually there. Uh, so yeah, you can see whether well, the same discs. But it was just looking at this one again, it just reminded me. So I've just got one of the new pads. You can see the you can see the swept area on the disc uh, where the pads touched. Um, I think these might be slightly bigger, but either way, if you look on the back of this old disc. Look at that, look guys, suffering from the fact that the actual, look how wide that should be touching. See how ridged that was. So yeah, I had some real issues with the um the old pads, which I think have all been ditched by right now. They're not, yeah, they're not there anymore. So I can't actually um, have a look at the pad and see uh, what was wrong with it. So already this is gonna be a marked improvement. So there's the hub. So I think what we'll do is get a bit of copper grease I'm going to put grease behind it and then we'll put this disc on and um, we've got the uh, retaining um, bolts, the canvas up ones that go in there and there and we'll put those in. Look how good that looks. I bit, bit shameless, took a couple of pictures for Instagram. I can't wait to see how good and fresh that looks when it's on the corner of the car. Right, you see I've just put a, a quick um, copper, a copper, well a copper slip on the copper grease. It's not a thick coat, it's just a well, you can't really tell, and the light makes it look like it's like icing. It, um, it's just it's over there, so when the disc goes on, there's a barrier between it. So um, as when it comes off in the future, which most probably won't be for quite some time, uh, it won't stick. Um, the other side, actually, when I took that one off, I really had to give it a bit of a beat from behind because the disc was uh was quite stuck on there. Um, you you always use it behind uh, brake pads. Sorry, behind brake pads anyway. Um, stops vibration and squeaking. So yeah, I'll stick it on here. Anyone's going to have any comments about it, I'm sure that you'll put it on the video. But this is how I'm doing it. Okay, there's that disc on, um, both the sort of retaining bolts. 
I wound in nice and tight, not crazy tight, but nice and tight, so it centered it and held it in place. Um, I got around the back with the, uh, the brush, a bit of copper slip, and managed to get down the shaft of um, what's the thread that's left on both of these. Just in future, no, that means that it's not going to immediately rust. I mean, they are galvanized anyway. Um, it just makes it easier for the future if it does need to come off, that the threads won't be, um, they might just be full of grease and um, probably some shit stick to it, but in general, they shouldn't be too corroded. So try and do everything I can to uh, future proof it for myself if I've got to change them again. Right, so I'm starting to rebuild um, one of the calipers. I say rebuild, I'm literally just putting on uh, the sprung metal clips that are on there to protect the head from the bolts. Um, I've got the bracket which goes on, um, which holds the um, hardline brake, well, the softline brake um, pipe. Obviously, that won't go on until it's on. Um, I was looking at the pads, I've got these thin plates and these plates. Pretty sure these plates separated off of the back of the old pads. So that's effectively the same as what this metal Dixel plate is there. But these small stainless ones, they they are separate. They came off. And obviously you can see exactly where they were um, previously. If I line it up inside, they actually only, they don't cover, oh, it's a pretty bad angle there. They don't cover the entirety of it that way of the actual cylinders that press out. So I'm not sure, I'm going to put them back in because obviously that was how it was. Um, and they fit over the the, disc, uh, the, um, the pads and they line up and they've got the arrow for which way up it should be. So yeah, it's, uh, it's what came out. Um, I don't even know if these have ever been changed um, since it came in from Japan. So yeah, that was what was there. So I'm going to put them back in, but obviously um, welcome some comments um, if anyone's seen these before or knows what they do. Um, the copper slip is what I've always used for anti um, squeak and stuff. So I shall put some on the back there to sandwich between that and this. Not a whole lot because obviously it's going to squeeze out. Um, and I'll probably put a little touch um, around there where the actual um, pistons um, touch. So yeah, I'm going to um, do a bit more here, but yeah, if anyone's got any, any comments that they've seen them before or, or can set me straight, then by all means, please do. Right, just give a bit of a close up. So that's um, the backing plate on, the grease, oh, my head's in the way, and that's that's pad on, that's the pins just start off, and that's the retaining um, springs or clips, whatever they call them, just threaded on, because once they're, um, once the pin's all the way through, if I can push this one through, um, there you go, these actually get pushed down um, and they go in push down over there and that pin goes into there and the same as this one it gets pushed down and the pin goes in the hole that hole there I'll do it when it's ready so they effectively keep um, keep the pressure the friction on uh, onto the pads okay so this is um, both the front calipers are done so I've just put all the bits back in them um, I mean it's straightforward if you've taken them to bits your own RX7 before then you know how they go back together um, the only slight tricky bit is the shorter of the springs, yeah, the, the top spring, this one which holds the, the pads out. Um, it's a bit a bit annoying to get it in there and then keep these up on top. Otherwise, um, and the sort of retaining pin springs, I always find it useful to um, screwdriver in the pin there itself and then twist it so it's inverted, the first one so it's vertically up, poke the wire down and twist it slightly as it goes in so it avoids scratching all the back as the pin goes through leave this bit out and do the same with the other one and this bows out and just push it in and it's nice um so yeah i'm really happy with how they look oh they're heavy um like i said we got the little um sort of retaining guards that one that i sprayed up um nice clean and black same with the other ones the rears haven't really touched but i just clipped on these um i don't even know what you call these things but I picked them up at the same time I got these ones from over where I kept them. So there we go. And then we got these brackets, um, which hold, the, like I said, the hold the brake lines on. So I think I'm going to go over there and um, try putting one on. Right, sorry, but um, I couldn't actually film this and get it done. So, I mean, it's easy. Literally, you've got the bracket here, which I showed you earlier, just holds the hard brake line. Uh, the one bolt at the top, there you go, there's my fingers on it, um, and then one at the bottom. So it's no biggie. I just finger tight them at the moment. Um, I had to thread this through the bracket before you offer the bracket up, otherwise you can't get this through if you bolt it up first. Um, so that's them. Well, that's that's one that in situ um, and in place. Obviously, I'll tweak it up. I've actually 
don't remember the talk setting, so I'll have to check uh, those online. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looks great. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. And then obviously I will um, connect up the brake lines again, take out the plastic plug that they've given you when you, uh, when you get delivered, um, work my way to the other side, do the same. Um, and then when I start the rears, I'll do a bit more footage. And there we go, do the same thing for you guys. Uh, so this is the rear brake, the new of the new disc. I don't need to point out that's the old disc. Um, yeah, so there, these are the new um, pads, obviously. Um, yeah, just looking at this. So obviously it's worn. Um, there's a few kind of grooves in it there with, from the pad, but uh, the swept area seems to be seems to be still a bit small compared to how big the pad is. So I don't know what it is with the inside um, brake discs not getting um proper um not being used properly so i'm not sure whether it maybe the pads and some kind of failure but um yeah now we'll be fine so um i pop this this one up if you go there's no retaining bolts on these ones so it's literally a case of putting it on but i'll put a bit of copper grease on the back there there was you can see there is some on there but i'll just um refresh it but here are the rears so i'm just putting them together so i've just pretty much done this one um started off with this, which is the bracket which holds the handbrake cable. Um, it, well, two hands. So it sits in there, there's one of those pins that clips it in, and then the cable goes down into the little nodule here. So when you pull the handbrake, I can't do it with one hand. No way, it's too sharp as well. That gets pulled in against the hard backstop of that. Um, oh, got my gloves. Right, so you've got this, um, I don't know really what it's called, but I think it's just, it goes between the actual, um, the hub and the and uh, the caliper so it's almost like uh maybe it's dampens vibrations i don't know um and inside if i slide this one off because i'm about to anyway so inside this the like the loose carrier should we say let's move this out of the way um yeah inside the carrier i've flinged off these four stainless little mounts um so they all sit in the recesses here 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 and there um, but there's a certain way around that they go. On the outside needs to be the larger pointy clip, so it's only on one side. But also, if you look down, there is a bigger bit and a, and a smaller bit. So, for example, this one would go in there. Um, and yeah, they're all orientated that way. So I've just put them in, put them in really gently with a screwdriver just to lift the clips up so that I don't end up taking any paint off because obviously they look so nice. <laughs> I don't want to scratch anything. Um, yeah, and then after that, I'm just making sure that these um, these are done up nice and tight because they've just been put in loose. So they are a 17, so I tweak them up nice and tight. Right, I think something that's a little bit helpful for if anyone else is doing this. Um, so the piston there has got a couple of grooves in it, which is obviously where you can wind it back in. And if you look on the bottom of the pads, there's a little lump there. And when it goes in, that little lump will have to sit in one of those. Um, now I had this lined up on there and I put one in and it wasn't quite it was a bit turned so it was sitting it's holding it off obviously it needs to be nice and flush so luckily for me I've actually got um these sort of brake um winder back thingies you know for so that actually sits in there I can't do it there we go and then you put a what was it three eighths socket and it literally took next to no effort um take it around a bit So it just literally does turn. Obviously, I don't need to turn that one now, so I've done it. But by looking at that one, it's off center, so I'll have to give that a tweak when I get to it. Um, hey -oh. yeah, and also those little stainless clips I've just put in—they're the guides which hold the little um, knobs on the end of these. So I'll put this back together again and put the pads in. Right. Okay. So here's the rears. I haven't put them on yet. I thought I'd do this. Um, like I tried to explain earlier. Um, right. Okay, so here's the rear caliper. The disc is on, but there's no retaining bolt. So I've just put it on as tight as I could and I've just put um, one of the nug nuts on. Just so that means it can't actually fall off. It's not, it's not tight. It's just kind of, it won't stay up. Anyway, so I thought what I'd talk about first is you see effectively underneath, here's the hole where the brake fluid goes into where the brake pipe actually attaches to. You'll see on the brake pipes, I've got a nice little locating nub in there. I don't even touch it. Um, and there, that sits in that hole. So effectively the orientation of this 
can't really go wrong. It goes in one way and one way round only. Um, and in the the banjo belt, you can see on it there, there's two copper washers. Obviously, one either side of that. So if I drop off the bottom one, there we go. That would mean that that will go that oh, that way round, and then the other copper washer will go this side before it's done up. So I'm assuming people understand, but a banjo bolt, it's basically a hollow bolt with a hole in there. So as the fluid passes down the brake pipe, there's a, um, they can enlarge, this, this is rubbish, front focus, there's an enlarged section, there you go, inside there, where the brake fluid comes up that hole. So the enlarged section basically means that the fluid can pass around the centre of the bolt to get to these holes from both sides. And then it goes down into the hole and then passes down there and into the caliper itself. Well, that's actually screwed. So that allows for, um, yeah, for fluid to go in um, and operate the brakes. Simple as that, really. Um, okay, so what I'll do, um, I will, I'm going to need two hands. So I'm going to get this on the back there with the locating lug in, as I've mentioned, and probably at least like the bottom bolt, locating bolt. So these brackets here on the hub, the caliper goes on the inside of these right next to the disc and the same there's the top one so i'll get at least one bolt on maybe just the top so i can sit on there um the pads are in the right position as far back as they'll go so they'll fit over here and there's enough play in this to line them up so once the banjo bolts in and at least the top bolts on then i actually have a bit of a breathe and i'll film again right, so now the caliper's on um i've yet to, to tweak up all the bolts nice and tight but i thought i'd just show you so this is the there we go this is the handbrake cable um, as we mentioned earlier, so that will go through this bracket and into here. So what we'll do first, and I'll just demonstrate this is the clip. It's slightly heavy, more heavy duty than the ones we've used elsewhere. This will go around, around that section, which is, we have push on, I won't do it now. Um, and that's what goes on inside of here to hold it in place. Let me take that off. Um, we will bring this forward, put that in here. If I can do it one-handed and show you, I'll be happy and tear my gloves to bits. Pull that back. I have to look what I'm doing as well. There we go. So that's still in the right place. This is almost, there we go, lined up. Then this, oh, there we go, that clip. Oh, not, there we go, not quite lined up. I probably need two hands of this. That clip will then push in there I'll get a mallet on it my rubber mallet just to tap it in place and uh, yeah effectively that's the handbrake so when the handbrake's pulled this reduces which pushes that on the spring and then it will imply apply the brakes um okay so yeah what I'll do is I'll tweak up all the nuts and bolts knock that thing on and uh that's this one done All right, so I've just had a go um, at doing the brakes myself. Obviously, it's not going to be um, good enough, but uh, I did my best, which is obviously is normally not good enough. Uh, so I just um, so I topped up the reservoir up there, rigged up this pot with a bit of tape so it was hanging underneath the pipe, and went round, started at the back, excuse me, pumped it through until I could hear it coming out, um, and then went around, tweaked it off. Well, I pumped a little bit through. You can see there, it's kind of the, the dirty stuff that's left in the lines. The last bit that was coming out, I was watching, was quite clean. So yeah, pinch it off, move around the car all the way around. The fronts took a while uh, to fill because obviously the calipers are completely empty and they're quite large. Um, so yeah, once I heard it all go around, um, I just nipped it off and I'm waiting for my sexy assistant to come down and give us a hand in about half an hour. And then I'll get her just to pump the pedal slowly while I go around and open each one and close it properly in between each um, pump so we can get all the bubbles out. And then we'll give it a test. Right, so this is the rear right. What you'll see here is I've got my little um, sacrificial pipe, little tail pipe, on the bleed nipple. I know the angle's pretty bad here. And then you've got a pot underneath. If you had a longer pipe, you'd have it in the pot, but I'm just holding it over. So the plan now is to put the 7mm spanner on the bleed nipple, and all I'll be doing is I'll be cracking it open slightly, and then my assistant in the driving seat will be pushing the pedal firmly all the way down to the bottom and holding it there. Once it's there, I'll be then doing the nipple back up again, and she'll lift the pedal, and we'll do the same thing a couple of times. If I crack it now, oh, let's get on this. Okay, press the pedal. Okay, now that's done back up again. Lift the pedal. 
park it again, press the pedal. Oh. So you see there we had a small bubble come up still, so there's still some air in there, so we'll do it a little bit more. Okay. Right, down again. Down. Lift the pedal. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do one more go. Um, push down. it down. Yep. Down. Okay, you lift the pedal. So we see there we had nothing but one small bubble just uh, halfway through there. So I'm pretty happy that that's pretty clean. Again, we'll leave it for a while when we move to the front and we'll just do one or two um, thrust uh, pumps at the back when we get here. Again, just to check at the end. Mm 